Let's do some calculus and trigonometry. All right, I found this great question that I thought we could do today. It's gonna to test your calculus skills, dy, dx. It's also gonna test your trigonometry skills, okay? So try this question, pause the video. What it's asking for is any values of x that you can put inside this x box for which the derivative of it is equal to zero, okay? So it's kind of a customary sort of question that you can get in, in calculus, except that we have a general solution and it's in, involving trigonometry. All right, so I'll show you how I would do this. Okay, so it's requiring this condition that dy dx is equal to zero. So I'm gonna begin by taking the derivative. dy dx is equal to, I'm gonna take the derivative of this composite function. So I begin by taking the derivative of sine, which is cosine cosine at the same input, which is pi cos x. And then I have to use the chain rule if you forgot. I've got to also differentiate the inside function. So the derivative of pi cos x, well the derivative of cos x is negative sine. I'm going to put the minus in front here, and that's going to be pi times sine x equals zero. I'm going to set it equal to zero. So now the objective is to figure out what values of x balance that equation, right? That's the condition. I got to balance this equation, keep it in balance. The negative pi doesn't matter. I can divide both sides by negative pi. It's going to keep it in balance. So really this comes down to solving sine x equals zero, right? Sine x equals zero, or the cosine of this, the cosine of pi cos x equals zero. Whoa. So I have essentially two equations, two baby equations to solve. Don't forget that if a times b is equal to zero, what does your brain tell you? That either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So think of this as the a and think of this as the b, two things being times together. Okay, so this one looks much easier to solve. So I'll start with this one. So I'm just gonna use the sine wave. So the sine wave looks like that. It maximizes at one, it minimizes at negative one, and it takes one full cycle to complete itself. So it starts at zero degrees, ends at 360 degrees, or in radians, which is what I'm, I'm gonna use here, because remember, a lot of these derivative formulas in trig are based on the assumption that you're using radian measure. So from zero to two pi. Okay, if you've forgotten, two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, so for what values of x, what angles will make sine equal to zero? Well, do you see sine is zero here? The x-axis is the zero line. So I'm gonna get, well, zero, pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, and it also goes in both directions, do you see? So that's an infinite graph, it's, it's eternal forever. So this is essentially, the answer here is um, x is going to be any multiple of pi. 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, positive, negative. So we say pi times n, where n is an integer, the letter z means integer. So that, that's the general solution to that. Okay, let's try to tackle this one. This one looks uglier. Okay, so let's get our mind around what it's asking. It's saying, for what angles, okay, so I'm going to forget the inside function for a second. For what angles will cosine be equal to zero? So I'm gonna take a similar approach here. I'm gonna use my cosine picture. Do you remember the cosine wave? It looks like that. And it maximizes at one and it minimizes at negative one. And again, it takes 360 degrees to complete itself. So I really like this. So I can look at this and say, well, for what angles? Forget about what this is. Just say it's, it's an angle, okay? For what angles is cos equal to zero? Well, it's gonna be zero here and zero there. But remember, it goes in both directions forever and ever. And I'm after all solutions, the general solution. That means scoop them all up. All right, so what I know here is that for A, okay, just the angles, I can say that A is equal to, well, that's pi over two if you forgot. That's 90 degrees or pi over two. And this is three pi over two but you get the negative cases too. So plus or minus pi over two, plus or minus three pi over two, well that just continues, one over two, three over two, five over two, and so on, if we were to analyze the full picture. This is a non-calculator question, okay? So we don't use our calculators. 
All right, so we've identified the angles for which cosine is equal to zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these angles equal that expression, because that is the angle, right? So I'll take the first um, pair. I'm going to say that pi times cos x is equal to plus or minus pi over 2. Well, do you notice that both sides can be divided by pi, which is kind of nice. So that just boils down to the cos x equals plus or minus 1 over 2. Now, you might have been away from your trig for a while. That's OK. But that's a pretty easy trigonometric equation to solve. OK? And what we remember is the 1 over 2. Those are special sides of a special triangle. And I have all four quadrants. I want to know where cosine is positive and where cosine is negative. So all four quadrants work here. I'm going to draw a little picture and take you back to your high school, high school trig. So what it means is, well, cosine, if you remember all students take calculus, which actually isn't true, but that's one way to memorize it. So sine is positive here, tan is positive in the third quadrant, cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, and they're all positive in the first quadrant. Well, this wants to know where is cosine positive and negative? Well, it's going to be positive and negative in all four quadrants. So if I do a criss cross, and I can form my special triangles. You might do it a little differently, and that's okay. What I'm after are the angle here, the angle here, all the way to there. These are terminal arms, and there. So what I'd like to know is what this reference angle is, because good news, watch, in black, this angle right here is the same as this one, is the same as this one, and that one. So there's a lot of symmetry to these, these uh, shapes. So if I know that angle, then I'm in good, good form. Well, I remember this little triangle. Do you remember this triangle? One, two, square root three. That's your special triangle. It's your 30, 60. So this here is 60 degrees, but in radians, it's pi over three. See, they're both threes, right? In radians, the, the numbers are the same. And then this one here is pi over six. So you can see here that, well, if I use one over two, one is the x coordinate. OK, so this here, this distance right here is 1, and the radius is 2. OK, you might have forgotten those little uh, factoids, but that's true. So that means the missing side is root 3. It's this one right here. Well, now you can see across from root 3, across from root 3 gives you pi over 3. We call that a reference angle. It's the angle formed between the x-axis and the terminal arms. So this is pi over 3, pi over 3, pi over 3, pi over 3, which gives us a way to get our answers. So our answers in this case will be in quadrant 1, pi over 3 works. In quadrant 2, well, that's pi, 180 degrees. So it's pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. And then I get one down here, pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. And then down here in the fourth quadrant, that's 2 pi minus pi over 3, or 5 pi over 3. Now don't forget, these continue. So if I add, if I add to all of these multiples of the period, which is 2 pi, 2 pi n, 2 pi n, and the same here, I'm going to get a whole set of um, angles. Now I can actually bring all this together. Look, so I've got a third of a pi, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, 6 thirds, both positive and negative. So the whole answer can be surmised as this, that x is equal to multiples of pi over 3. So I'm going to write pi over 3, which is 60 degrees in degrees. Multiply it by n, where n belongs to the set of integers. And I'm going to put a little curly around that. And that's the final answer. That's, those are the set of angles that, when plugged into here, will make the derivative of this function equal to 0. In other words, horizontal tangents. All right. If you like this video, slap a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you back here for some more fun math videos.